Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome back again to Canon for the TV, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. It's now the evening show over here, yeah, in Canon for the TV land. Uh, we're going to be reviewing the news early on today with a little bit more source, yeah, Florent Balogun news. Florent Balogun news, yeah, I'm sure you guys were waiting for Florent Balogun news. Now, you waited for Thomas Party news, weren't you? There's no Declan Rice news here. But we're going to be reviewing that uh, as well as some of the bits and pieces. We'll also be going into and onto the platform to check out the latest poll that we have done. And um, some of the bits and pieces. Some of the bits and pieces on Canon for TV. Yes, welcome back indeed to Canon for the TV, where we um, we are in transfer uh, season, yeah, the silly season. But um, just click the like button somewhere down here, somewhere down here. Also, if you want to come into the live chat, let me know your thoughts about all the action, all the transfers, all the lack of transfers, and so much about the incomers. What about the outgoings? There's not been any outgoings so far, has there? Has there been any? Not any uh, outgoings as far as I'm aware anyway. But let's get straight into this one. So the first uh, new segment uh, of the evening. Um, Arsenal uh, Chief Edu iron up six player sales to fund latest Mikel Arteta transfer. Yeah, Arsenal Mikel, uh, manager Mikel Arteta will need to trim his squad before launching a bid for £40 million rating attacking midfielder Mohamed Kudus. The Gunners have spent... 200 million pounds uh, in this summer to sign Kai Havertz, Euron Timber, and lately uh, Declan Rice. The latter player became the most expensive British footballer of all time when his 105 million pound transfer from West Ham was finally finalised uh, earlier this month. Now, Kudos, the midfielder, is one of the most exciting young playmakers in Europe after three impressive seasons with Ajax. The Ghanaian international scored 18 goals and provided seven assists uh, for the Dutch side in the Eredivisie League uh, last season and scored two goals in the World Cup in Qatar. Now, Arteta is keen to add Kudos, uh, allegedly, uh, to his squad, but will need to say goodbye to some of the first-team players. This claim that six stars could be heading for the exit door. Kieran Tierney, Cedric Suarez, Nico Pepe, Abbasam de Congo, Nuno Tavares and Rob Holding uh, could all leave the Emirates in the coming weeks. Now, as reported by the Daily Mail, Arsenal Sporting Director Edu has advised Arteta that he will need to trim the squad down in order to finance the purchase of Musu. Now, I'll tell you what, I, I mean, Daily Mail says that, but I think, is it not obvious? We know we need to see some players leaving. Is, is it, I mean, it's one thing to have the numbers, but it's one thing to have quality in numbers and depth. So if you're saying literally you, you want to buy these players, you're going to have to sell some of the players. I mean, you know, Nico Pepe, it's not, it's, it, it, surely he's got to be on the top of the list there. Surely. Anyway, Arteta can balance the books by getting rid of uh, Deadwood, uh, putting Tierney, a uh, 26, in the category. Uh, it's harsh because he's done well during his uh, four years. I can't believe it's been four years. Four years uh, since the, the, the Scott International had actually fallen behind Alexander Shinchenko in the pecking order. Tierney still has three years left on his contract, allowing uh, Arsenal to demand command £35 million for his services. Now, uh, Newcastle uh, are the front uh, favourites to sign the former Celtic left back, although he's still been linked with likes of Man City and Real Madrid in the past. Uh, Sergio Suarez, another one, uh, age 31, spent the second half of last season on loan at Fulham and has just a year remaining on his deal. Like Suarez, Pepe is also uh, out of contract in the June of 2024 and completed a loan spell at Nice last term. Arsenal are unlikely to recoup anywhere near the valuation of £62 million, the former uh, record side for Arsenal. Uh, they paid for him. Uh, Suarez and Pepe have both been left out of Arsenal's uh, squad for the pre-season tour of the United States and also Lokonga, uh, but we know literally the reason why, because he is injured. Tavares is another uh, player missing uh, a tour of the United States. He has two years left on his contract and is expected to complete a permanent transfer over the next few weeks. It's thought that West Ham and Galatasaray are interested in signing him. 
Now, the final player who's likely to leave the Emirates, apparently, is uh, Rob Holding, according to the Daily Mirror. Uh, and Arsenal have already rejected a £2.5 million bid from Bejit Tash for the 27-year-old who has fallen behind Ben White, Gabriel Magallians, William Saliba, and lately, Jacob Kivor in the pecking order. The rival of Timber will only further limit Holding's opportunities at Arsenal. I tend to disagree on that last point there. I, do you know what? I still think that Rob Holding... You might agree or disagree with me, but I still think Rob Holden has a part to play. We need squad numbers, don't we? Squad numbers. Still only age 27. Hasn't been able to hold down a regular you know, place in the first team, but he's a squad player. And don't say, oh, but he let us down last season because when William Saliba was out injured, you remember playing against Sport in Lisbon? Rob Holden came in and he didn't do well, but... The quality is 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 so sparse, isn't it? It's obvious. William Saliba is not a Rob Holding, and Rob Holding is not William Saliba, but a squad player nonetheless. All right. Um, the second new segment, which I thought was kind of funny, to be honest. This, I don't know what this is. What is this? <laughs> God dare you me. Well, Arsenal have launched their bold new, talk about bold? New away kit for the, uh, the upcoming season to less than universal approval. The North London Club renewed their association with Adidas four years ago. God, time, again, time gone so quick. And have delivered a series of outstanding popular kits. Now, what I'm going to say is, do you remember when the Banana Skin Away kit came out? And even then we were saying, oh, look at it. It's horrible. It's disgusting. And what is it now? It's a classic kit now isn't it and i have no doubt that sometime in a distant distant long distant 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 future we might be saying the same thing about this kit here but for now not for me but there is a history behind the design apparently yeah the design for the upcoming campaign features a return of sorts to yellow uh, as a predominant color okay, yellow <sighs> my goodness with a series of black squiggly lines causing a consternation and headaches in equal measures. But explain the uh, inspiration behind the gar gar garish design. Arsenal said in a statement that it coincided with the launch. The eye-catching shirt uh, features fluid black lines inspired by the map of Islington. Oh, that's what it is. The map of Islington. Who would have thought? Yeah. The design apparently represents a journey supporters uh, make at the club's home borough for away days on the road. A fresh shock yellow base colour is complemented by light blue accents that feature on the collars and sleeves. Well, anyway, Gabby Martinelli says, I love it. I just love it. Do you really like it, Martinelli? Really? Ah, I don't think you do, man. <laughs> I don't think you do, you little liar. But again, like I said, I'm sure that this design sometime in the long future will become a classic kit for some but not for me bruised banana anyway <laughs> the last news segment uh yeah is it a breaking news is it breaking news uh, yeah, it could be well listen for a uh, has insisted he is cool relaxed and collective over whatever decision is taken on his future arsenal uh demand a 50 million pound transfer fee uh, for his services now inter milan are leading the chase for rb uh, with rb leipzig ac milan and crystal palace among the other clubs interested in arsenal striker and apparently inter uh, has been pushing and pursuing a deal for Romelu Lukaku, but now have changed tact after seeing two bids rejected by chelsea uh, I, I, I tell you what, uh, just to cut, you know, a long story short, uh, Florian Balogun, I've just seen him, some, some still shots of him out in the States. If Arsenal do sell him, it could be one to come back and bite us. If we sell him to a Premier League club, I mean, imagine he'll be geared up and ready to go all guns blazing against Arsenal, won't he? Uh, I'm not going to even entertain the question, should he stay or should he go? Because we've spoken about that already. My opinion is he should stay. We're a little bit short for strikers, to be honest. I mean, Gabba Jesus, he's not going to give you 20 plus goals per season, is he? And it's kind of nice to see that the goals last season were spread 
amongst the wingers and the attackers that we've got there. Bukayo Saka, Martinelli, uh, Erdegaard scored some goals, um, Gabba Jesus scored some goals. So, yeah, but I would still like to see an out-and-out striker that can give Arsenal something different. Balogun, got to keep Balogun. You know, when, when you, you've got your plan A and the plan A is not working, and even apart from that, having the competition amongst the strikers. So if, if one has, like, gone off form or not putting their weight, hoy them off and put on Balogun. It should be as simple as that. But Balogun has already said, do you know what? I ain't going out on loan. <laughs> he will not be going out on loan. So he's going to force... Mikhail Teta's hand, isn't he? And you probably don't realise this, but Eddie Nketiah and Balogun, they both have the same agent. Go figure. These have been the news segments now, come running on Canon 4 TV. We've just been reviewing the news of the earlier segment with a little bit of Balogun-esque news on the platform. So um, what you can do, I see like the live chat has kind of been populated somewhat. I'm pointing to my, my TV, not my TV, to the live chat here. I feel like a weatherman. Come into the live chat. Yes, I'm talking to you, just watching me over here. Come into the live chat. I want to know your thoughts about Balogun, Eddie Nketiah, all the six players that we spoke about there who could be heading for the exit door. That's Rob Holden, Yo Tavares, Samuel Congas, etc., etc., etc. Do you agree with the list or do you think there should be maybe more players or less players on that list? I don't know. Your heart's content. Right, so what we need to do now, are we need to go into uh, our Twitter feed and see if there's been any comments there uh, thus far. Uh, John Nagise is so mischievous. <laughs> yeah, Arsenal's new signing. He's great. <laughs> Thank you for that, John Giza. All right, uh, apart from that, let's look on the platform and see uh, the latest poll uh, that we did two days ago. And it was in regards to Declan Rice. Should Declan Rice be given the captain's armband? I mean, you've got your archetypal, you know, uh, captain in Martin Erdegaard, who's the, the pin-up boy of Arsenal, if I kind of get it, who leads by example. He's not a shouter. He's not a shouter. But... I like my captains to be a shouter. Yeah. Um, so that's why I'm asking the question. So we have received over 1,000 votes, 9 comments, and 25 likes. 17% of you, you said Declan Rice should have the captain's armband. And 83% said, Alex, are you crazy? Declan Rice has just come in. It's just come in. I can give him the captain's armband. I'm just asking the question. Just asking the question. All right, so I believe we can now go into the live chat for the first time on this evening show over here. I've been told, don't talk too loud. Keep my voice down. What's this world coming to? Anyway, first up, we've got John Nagizaguna. This is the evening Gunas, and even to you, John Nagizaguna. Uh, the Assemble, good evening, says, good evening, Alex. Uh, I'm a tad worried uh, if we can't sell who we want to sell. Do you think uh, there is a chance that, that players uh, we, should, we, we shouldn't sell could be cherry-picked by other teams? Yeah, of course. Of course, I just spoke about Balogun. Um, yeah. But I don't know, what do you think about Balogun, Assemble? Do you think he should be on the exit list? Or do you think we should do everything possible? I say we, but Mikko Arteta should do everything possible to keep this youngster. But it's, it's very possible, but... I'm thinking about the players, young players, who probably still have something to prove. So for me, it's Samuel Conga, Tavares, the list might go on and on. But Nico Pepe, I've said it two seasons ago, that he doesn't have any future at Arsenal. Doesn't. Cedric Suarez, another player. To me, I will keep him because he's kind of versatile. He can play left back, right back, wing back. Keep him. Keep him. Why not? We need squad depth. It is as simple as that. Now, with Florian Balogun, again, I've seen that some still photos of him, again, looking very, very relaxed. Very, very relaxed, irrespective of what's going on in the background. You know, he did say, well, I'm cool, whatever happens. 
I leave it up to the powers that be. But you know what? I won't be going out alone again. I thought, wow, yeah. Put the onus on the manager now, yeah? He can't do anything more than that, apart from try and fight for the first team place. But that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Oh, this simple good evening. Good evening, 4 2 Arsenal. Oh, there you go, there you go. Uh, Mike, good evening. Uh, good jobs, brother. Thanks uh, for information. Always thank you, my brother. I do appreciate that. I, I tell you what, it's always good to get those comments. I mean, I get the odd silly comment that I don't pay no attention to, but people are going to have their own opinion, aren't they? But when I get those comments there, I thought, yeah, it is, it's still worthwhile doing the podcast Canal 4 TV it is it still has something to offer that's what I'm going to say anyway uh, Junior Martin uh, good evening to you uh, says uh, based on Islington borderlines would you buy it I wouldn't I would not buy it nah uh, the shirt is a map of uh, Islington apparently I think it will uh, suit a <laughs> Born and bred in Islington, man. Born and bred. Yeah, all those places. Canterbury, you know. Oh, my goodness. Essex Road, Newnoff Road, the Chapel Market. All them areas used to be my my uh, my ends. But no no, no longer. No longer. But born and bred, man. Islington born and bred. Uh, Evening, uh, John. Uh, the squad looks uh, okay, but he uh, he comes. Uh, the, here comes a tricky bit: sending the right players without uh, weakening the squad. Remember, we need to sell before we can further uh, enhance the quality of the squad. I think someone asked me a question about Thomas Party. If he goes, are we not weakening the the, the squad where we are? We are. Uh, John says um, Pepe, Cedric, Holding, uh, Balogun. Probably all going. Uh, to wonder, good evening to you. Says uh, the worst Arsenal kit ever. <laughs> I don't know, you know. I think there are probably other contenders, but but bro, what do you think about? If you remember when it came out, the banana, the bruised banana kit. I was thinking, what is that, man? And it's not. It's a classic, isn't it? It's a classic. Uh, Balogun could be uh, next, uh, yeah, and that that's what I was thinking, the, the next uh, Gnabry, Serge Gnabry, it could happen, but maybe we won't sell him to another Premier League team. Uh, John, how much will it cost uh, to replace him with a more experienced uh, centre-forward? I guess it's as good as mine, man. Your guess is as good as mine. Anyway, that's a question not for me, that's, that's for John. Uh, right, so just, just to take a, a little a break from everything and just to remind you guys that um, I, 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 do, do, I do do I do other uh, projects, uh, other things, other sideliners. I mean, doing this platform is not my main job. Uh, I did have another job until uh, I left because of school. Uh, well, anyway, uh, we shall start again uh, back in September. But I do other projects and this is just one other project that I actually do so have a look at this video and we shall see you in just a few ticks enjoy it oh. what was that What was that? What was that? Hi, my name is Alex, and as you can see, I earned £40 in cryptocurrency passively 
Now, if you want to know how I did it, send me an email at arsenalpublic1 at gmail.com or alternatively, send me a WhatsApp message at 447949360741. And maybe you too can earn cryptocurrency passively whilst you eat, sleep, drink, have a shower. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so yeah, so earning some cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency means um, some money. If you're thinking you would like to know how I did it, again, the information is there. Send me an email at arsenalpublic1 gmail.com. And actual fact, the email is in the description box if you are interested. Right, so on with the show, off with his head. Uh, last few comments here. Uh, Junior says, uh, I, I think Party and Rice uh, would work well if Party doesn't go. Junior, I completely agree. I completely agree with you, man. Yeah. But it, again, it's it's weird that we've been asking for, uh, you know, a relatively good uh, uh, midfielder who can partner uh, Thomas Party. Now we've got that player in Deck and Rice. Seems like Thomas Party will be leaving. Make it up. Couldn't make it up. Uh, are you staying up to watch it, Alex? Yes, I will be. I will be. Yeah, because I'm not. I'm not. I'm not at work, so um, I can be up until my heart's content. But I've got to make sure I bring in the washing. The washing's still out in the garden. I've got to finish up the plates as well. No tea, no tea. But yeah, I'll be still up to watch it. Uh, apparently wouldn't uh, like Balogun to leave. Uh, if you remember, and uh, Cole left Arsenal and had a wonderful career, uh, this stage of his career, he needs to enjoy playing no matter who it's with. What can I say? There's no doubt about it that Balogun is very, very hungry, very, very ambitious. So why can't we just use that to our advantage use it or you're going to lose it all right um are we finished are we finished i think we might um, we might have finished now um let's quickly refresh this page here just to double check uh, okay yeah, I, I believe that we, I believe that we have, we, oh. <laughs> I believe that we, we have, we have finished. Thank you for those notifications there. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we, we, we have come to an end on uh, this even show over here on Canon Foy TV, where we just spoke about some of the players who could be leaving uh, the shores of Arsenal. Finally, I mean personally, I know, I know, I know I've always said that we don't have we don't have any room or we can't have any room for our sentiments. But if Rob Holding was to leave, I I think it would be a shame because you don't. Can I say he's the ultimate professional? Because you never hear this 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 player complaining. I mean, there's been some jokes about his hairline. I mean, look at my hairline. I don't even have the hairline. But it would be a shame if we let go of Rob Holding. A squad player. We need squad players. We do. Um, yeah, and we also spoke about one player that uh, apparently Arsenal and Mikel Arteta and Edu are after, Mohamed Musu, uh, another product of Ajax. That conveyor belt just keeps churning out those players, man. What about our academy? What about our academy? And what else was there? Oh, yeah, the foreign Balogun news as well. You know, that he's just so cool, calm, and collective. Whatever happens, whatever happens, his call, whatever happens to him at Arsenal, or maybe away from Arsenal. And yeah, again, another player that I think we just need to keep hold of, but it's not down to me, is it? Not down to me. Uh, I believe we've got one more comment. Uh, one comment. Uh, I would keep a Balogun and rather sell Eddie, uh, who is a good uh, striker, but for those mid-table teams. Uh, one more from the Assembled who says, uh, uh, what's your take on Arsenal at the moment? Um, is that a question for me, the Assembled, or is it for uh, Tawanda? Is it for me? 
Um, I think it's probably a cushion for for Tawanda, not for me. And with that said, we, we've come to an end on this one. Actually, slightly longer compared to the morning show, morning show, lunchtime show. And um, I will be back uh, tomorrow, give you some more live news. Uh, oh, right, it's a question for me. Ah, oh, man, at, at the moment, <laughs> what can I say? What can I say? I'll probably have to go for another half hour. I mean, the transfers, the transfers for me, if I had to give it marks out of 10, I'll probably give it a strong six by the mere fact that we have spent a lot of money, 200 million pounds, in this transfer window. Kai Havertz, <laughs> Julian Timber, and Declan Rice. So in that bunch there, we've, we've managed to share a bucket load of money for one particular player, and that's Declan Rice. So they, you can see Big Arteta has got the back in. But striking, strike department, the players who still need to be sold. Yeah. Do you know what I'll say, Assembled? Let's just wait and see. I, don't, I, I'm, I know I'm sounding like a, like a broken record. Let's see what happens in the new season. I mean, I've really laid on my marker. I don't believe Arsenal will win the Premier League anytime soon. Last season was the best opportunity for us to, to, to win that. But let's just wait and see how the season starts. I'm, I'm, I'm emboldened to see that that we bought players, three players. Um, you're in Timber. I'm not sure whether we need to buy a player like because we've got set the backs. Um, Kai Havertz, I've got a big question mark over Kai Havertz. And Declan Rice, yeah, a former captain of West Ham. You know, he brings a lot of leadership qualities, but we need a lot more than just one player. A lot more than just one player. But I'll give it a 6 out of 10. There's still a lot of work to be done. A lot of work to be done. And in regards to the away kit, that away kit. Oh, my goodness. Anyhow, last three, last three now. Because you kept me on now. I uh, agree uh, that Kai uh, transfer is looking not so good. I'm just not going to... You know what? Kai Havertz for me is not the guy. He is not the one. He is not the one. And you're probably thinking, what, what do you mean he's not the one? A, f a few years ago when we bought Thomas Party, I was told that Thomas Party he would re revolutionise the club. And that, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Stop, start, injury, injury, stop, start, injury, injury. And, but Kai Havertz is not, he is not the one. He's not the one. I'm not sure what we're looking for with Kai Havertz. Is it that we're trying to flog a dead horse and make him out to be someone that he's not? But then what is Kai Havertz? Is he the one to, you know, the, the, I mean, I've seen the stats. He's good at, you know, intercepting and progressing the ball forward. But at the business end and the business end being scoring goals, that's not his strongest point, is it? But Kai Havertz for me is not, he's not the one. It might just be Declan Rice is the one. I don't know. He could be the catalyst, but they've still got a lot of work to do. And I've spoken on many uh, uh, occasions about a strong number two for Mikko Arteta. That hasn't happened. Has he learned his lesson? Plan A, plan A, plan A, plan A, plan A, plan A. What about plan B or plan C? Has he learned his lesson? So the assembled, the thing is, I want to see how the season kicks off and how it finishes. Because they do say it's not how you start, it's how you finish. So Arsenal, they're, they're going through a transitional period where they've got a little bit of experience now in Declan Rice, who's just won that Conference Cup, European silverware. Kai Havertz didn't do it at Chelsea. You're in Timber, I would say... I won't say he's the one, but I'm I'm hoping for good things, not great things from him, good things. But the player who I want to see go another level is Gabby Martinelli. I believe he might be the one. Because we've seen Bokai Saka, what he can do, Erdegaard, Gabby Jesus. But I'm thinking and hoping 
Gabby Martini might be the one. All right, uh, just a couple more. Because uh, I've been told to keep my voice down. <laughs> yeah, I, t I totally agree uh, with that, Alex. Thank you for that. Ty Dallasaurus, uh, what would uh, be Colin Reed? I think the last time he came in, I think, did he not give a two? I think. I think he gave a two or 2.5. But good evening to you, Ty Dallasaurus. Uh, we have got our primary target, so uh, kudos uh, to the management. Um, but it's like you've got a balloon full of 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 water, yeah. But the balloon has got holes in all over the place, and that by that I mean, you know, you've you've got the water in, Kai Habits, you're in timber, Deck and Rice, but the water coming out is the potential that we might be losing a Thomas Party. That's not make any sense to me. A party and never had an injury before he came to Arsenal. I know, I know. We spoke about that so many times over the, last, the, the course of what, two seasons, two or three seasons. Uh, why uh, do you think that is? Because we don't manage him. I mean, you, listen, you, we know the Premier League is, the pace is fast, it's quick, it's more robust than the Spanish League and the Italian League. But then if you know that, you manage the player a lot better than we have. He cannot play all 38 games in one season. He cannot play all the cup games. Manage him a lot better. So that's what it is. You know, the muscular, you know, the memory, mus the muscular memory is just not there. It's not there in the legs. It's not there. I've got to wrap this up, guys. Uh, what everyone is uh, overlooking is rice has to uh, be bed in Shaka and party uh, know uh, what each other's uh, strengths and weaknesses uh, were that's a very very good point very good point as Kai Havertz uh, height give me a good ability to head the, the ball in the lot in the back of the net good question I remember when I was watching uh, a video profiling Kai Havertz and they were saying, explain why he would be a good fit. Don't look at the stats about the um, the XG, expected goals. It's just what he does in in the let's say the, the middle of the park, as it were, the interceptions and you know looking for the runs and what have you. The final third, he doesn't do the business there. But I don't remember his stats about his head and ability. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. I'm, I'm really sorry. Um, how many games do you think Party uh, should play in? I would say not not more than than 20, 25. You might sound risky, but not more than twenty games. Not more than twenty games per season. And if you got you know a youngster like Declan Rice who can do that box to box, not so creative, there's no reason for Thomas Party to be playing or even asking to play 38 games and then a little bit of cup games he, he just can't do it he can't do it and there's another stat as well that i saw this morning even man city a lot of their players don't play 38 games is it about managing the players rot rotation uh guys uh, I've, got, I've got to stop <laughs> i do have to stop uh, thank you so much to you for listening to me over here on California TV. I will be back tomorrow morning, give some more live news. Um, who knows? We might be talking about that Thomas Party has decided to stay. Hey. Or it might be something else that he's decided to go. Oh. Anyhow. <laughs> Anyhow. Uh, enjoy yourselves, enjoy your evenings or your morning or your afternoon, wherever you are as well. And just remember, just remember that this over here has been Canon Fodder, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. <laughs>